Hi folks, welcome. My name is Madhura Miskowski and I'm the co-founder and VP of product at Platform9. And I'm gonna use this video to demonstrate to you just how simple and easy it is to build your own OpenStack-based private cloud using Platform9. So let's get started. In front of me, I have a demo environment of Platform9 and I'm logged in to the account as an administrator user. And once I sign in, the dashboard guides me through a step-by-step -step process to get started with my Platform9 Cloud. So this first step of the process is to pair your existing or brand new Linux servers with this Platform9 Cloud. And now Platform9 supports both Linux as well as VMware vSphere environment. But in this particular demo, we're gonna look at um, building a Platform9 Cloud using your newer existing Linux infrastructure. So the process is really simple. As a first step, we're gonna download an agent RPM to deploy it on one of our existing Linux servers to add it to Platform 9. So let's do that. I'm gonna download the RPM because I have a CentOS server running in my lab infrastructure. And so I'm gonna copy over this RPM to that CentOS server to get started. So I have this RPM in front of me and I'm gonna copy over RPM 10.4.53.82. So now that the agent is copied and it's a really lightweight agent, about three megabytes in size, so it gets copied very quickly. Now we're going to SSH into that server and trigger installation of the RPM. So we're following these three simple steps here. We copied the agent RPM to my physical Linux server. Now I'm going to do a yum install of the agent on this server. And as the agent is being installed, it's doing a couple of things. It's doing a discovery on the server. It's looking at what operating system is being installed, what packages are currently deployed on this server, and it pushes that data back to the Platform9 Cloud Controller, which is running Platform9 Managed OpenStack. And so now that the agent got deployed on this physical server, if I switch back to the infrastructure dashboard, it gives me an updated alert. Um, it tells me that I have about seven servers that are awaiting authorization. And so one of these servers is this CentOS 651 Platform 9.sys. That's the server that, it, that we just pushed the Platform 9 agent RPM on. And so the model again is very simple. Um, as a first step, you download the Platform 9 agent, you copy it over to all your physical servers that you want to be, that you want to make part of your Platform 9 cloud. And then you come back to the Platform 9 dashboard and authorize these servers one by one. And as I authorize these servers, I get to assign a role to each of the servers. And so each physical server by default gets a hypervisor role, but I'm going to select this one particular server and assign to it image library role. So I'm going to make this server backing for my glance image catalog. And you can customize the location of where your VM content or your image content goes to as you um, pair your servers with Platform 9. So let's go ahead and authorize this server. And so now what's happening is that as we've authorized these servers explicitly to make them part of the Platform 9 cloud, the Platform 9 agent is doing a deep discovery and pulling in the required package dependencies from the Platform 9 controller to prepare the server to be part of a Platform 9 cloud. And I wanna highlight that um, one of the big differentiators of Platform 9 is that it not only works with your brand new greenfield environments um, where you have just racked and stacked a bunch of Linux servers and done basic networking configuration with them to map them to your physical network. Um, and then you can make them available to Platform 9. 
However, if you do have existing Linux server deployments, um, which have existing workloads that are running on them, then Platform 9 is fundamentally designed to work with your existing infrastructure as well. So we work with both greenfield as well as brownfield environments. And when you point an existing server to Platform 9 that has some workloads running, those workloads seamlessly become part of your Platform 9 cloud. And they just start showing up in your Platform 9 instances dashboard without you having to do anything special. So as we paired these two servers and made them part of Platform 9, these five virtual machines that were running on, um, on this particular CentOS 6 5 server are now part of the Platform 9 cloud. And so this just goes to demonstrate the core principle of simplicity that Platform 9 follows around just making it easy for you to get up and running with your OpenStack cloud. Going back to the initial setup process, now that we have paired some of our servers and made them part of the Platform 9 cloud, the next step is to import some images into your image catalog. And at this point, I'm gonna switch into another environment, which is a live environment. It's one of our internal environments. Um, and if we switch to the image catalog view, you'll notice that the catalog here is populated with a bunch of template images. Now, adding a new image to your catalog is again a very simple process. Um, the simplest way to upload an image to your catalog is to copy it over to this particular folder on the server that has been given image catalog role. And once you do that, the image automatically appears and becomes part of your catalog. So it starts getting reported in this image catalog view. But you have a couple of ways of uploading images to the catalog as well. You can either do a URL based upload or you can do a direct upload. So going back to the setup process, once you add your physical infrastructure in terms of your physical servers to Platform 9, um, the agent does an initial discovery and figures out the total capacity that you have on that physical server across compute memory, storage, and network. It discovers any local storage or any NFS-based shared storage that's associated with that physical server. Um, and it seamlessly starts reporting that data to your infrastructure dashboard. It starts giving you perspective into your total capacity, um, your usage of the capacity, what is the current utilization, what is the current allocation of resources, just to give you a better perspective into what is your current um, infrastructure uh, and how much capacity, free capacity do you have. Um, and this data is designed to help you with your capacity planning process. Switching to the networks view here, um, when you drop in Platform 9 agent on one of your physical servers, Platform 9 also does a networking discovery on that server. Now, the simple assumption that we make is across your physical servers, as long as you've named your Linux bridges with the same name, we assume that they're part of the same network. So Platform 9 requires that you have prepared your physical servers with simple Linux bridge-based networking before we can discover networking information from your server. Um, and Linux bridges are the most popular way to configure networking in the Linux world. And so through this simple assumption, um, as soon as you drop in the Platform 9 agent on your physical server, we're able to start reporting to you the networking topology within your infrastructure. So for example, I have this lab network within this setup, which is mapped to all my physical servers in this Platform 9 account. And I have configured this network and given it a pool of static IP addresses and given it my physical networking information so that Platform 9 can then use this data and customize virtual machines and assign static IP addresses to them. So you can either configure a network to be used by DHCP or you can give it a pool of static IP addresses or a CIDR so that Platform 9 can then utilize this information. So the networking process, setup process again, is extremely simple. Everything just gets automatically discovered by Platform 9. Let's look at a key additional functionality that um, 
most popularly gets used in the context of defining tiers of resources or tiers of infrastructure within your environment. And this functionality is called host aggregates. So once you get started with your Platform 9 Cloud and you pair some of your existing infrastructure, the next step that you would likely want to do is start, start allocating or assigning one or more tiers of resources. So for example, in this environment, I have a tier of servers called production tier, um, which has a simple key value pair tag associated with it called production is equal to true. Let's say that we want to define a new tier of resources in this environment um, called QA host aggregate. And the tag we want to associate with it is QA server value is true. And we want to use this track to designate those servers which are designed to run our QA workloads. Um, so let's say that these two servers are the ones. Um, and so I'm going to say add host aggregate. And so you'll see that this new aggregate just got added. It has the tag QA server equal to true. And once you define the aggregate, platform line immediately starts giving you visibility into what's your capacity across compute memory and storage in the context of that aggregate. So this is a really simple lightweight way for you to um, assign tags to servers that are part of different data centers. For example, um, tag servers in Palo Alto data center with one tag and in Washington DC data center with another tag, and then use that data to get visibility into what's my total capacity in my Palo Alto data center, or what is it in my Washington DC data center, and so on and so forth. And you can switch across usage and allocation again in this context, similar to the um, overall platform line dashboard. And so you will likely do this as a next step as part of your platform line cloud setup process to designate one or more tiers of resources within your infrastructure. And once you do that, um, the next step that you will want to do is start defining multi-tenancy. Because at this point, you're done with your initial setup process um, and you're ready to start inviting one or more end users to be part of your platform line cloud. So that process again is pretty streamlined. Um, defining a new tenant in platform line is a matter of um, giving the tenant a name and then assigning some pools of capacity, some quotas to that tenant um, to get started. So let's call this a marketing team tenant. And then let's assign to this tenant a quota of 50 virtual CPU cores, about um, one gigabyte of memory, Oops. and about 200 gigabytes of storage. And so let's go ahead with that. Now, as part of defining a tenant, not only can you assign logical pools of capacity to that tenant, but a key mapping that you can perform with Platform 9 is you can select what specific networks the workloads that are defined within that tenant should go to and what specific resource tiers those workloads should go to. So here we're going to select that all the virtual machines created in this tenant should only go to the lab network. I'm then going to map some users to be part of this cloud, to the to be part of this tenant, and I'm going to give them self-service user role. So this is a way for you to map your um, team members within your organization and give them self-service access uh, to the platform and cloud. And finally, I get to select what flavors this um, this tenant should have access to. Um, so let's select one of these test flavors here. And so this is my ability to restrict access for my tenant to only a specific set of resources or resource tiers because those tiers have been captured as part of these flavors. So by giving my tenant access to specific flavors, I'm restricting what tiers of resources the tenant can have access to. So now we've defined a new tenant and we've invited some users to be part of the tenant. Adding new users to Platform 9, again, is a very simple process. You invite users based on their email addresses, 
um, and for each user, you can set up two-factor authentication, which tends to be one of a key request that we receive from our customers. And it's just a way to enable added security for, for your platform line login process. And so when I say enable, platform then walks me through the process of setting up and managing my two-factor authentication. And so this, in a nutshell, is the process to get started with your Platform 9 Cloud. And once you invite your end users to be part of your Platform 9 Cloud and give them self-service access role, then they will have access to the images that you have given that tenant access to, the instances that are part of the tenant, and the flavors that you've given access to that tenant. And so then your end users are enabled to start provisioning workloads or provisioning virtual machines, both using their self-service user interface or using the Platform 9 OpenStack REST APIs. And so through this interface, you can do a number of things with your virtual machine instances. You can quickly snapshot them and create a golden template image. So for example, if I wanted to create a golden CentOS 1.0 build image from this VM because I configured this VM and captured this particular build in it, then I could go ahead and do that by simply saying snapshot the VM and create a new image out of it. And so now you will see that the snapshotting process is active and what's happening is we're taking, capturing a snapshot of the VM to create an image out of it and publish it into the platform line image catalog. And so you can perform a number of operations on your virtual machine instances, such as lifecycle operations, etc. You can move virtual machines across different tenants if you desire to do so. And finally, creating a new virtual machine is a simple process of selecting the right image to create the virtual machine from, applying to it an appropriate flavor, so let's select the m1.small flavor here. Picking what network the virtual machine should be deployed to. And this is the list of networks that my tenant has access to. Configuring the virtual machine, giving it a name. You can inject SSH keys as you deploy a new virtual machine. And you can deploy multiple virtual machines at a given moment if you if you wish to do so. So I could fire up five virtual machines with the exact same configuration through this dialog box. Let's unselect that. Let's go next. And this is the point where you can customize the virtual machine uh, through the mechanism of cloud in it. So you can specify things like my virtual machine should be injected with this particular default IP address, or I want to fire up my puppet agent or my chef agent um, or my Ansible script once the virtual machine is powered on and it acquires an IP address and so on and so forth. And so this process um, helps with end-to-end -end automation of your virtual machine creation process, both via user interface or via APIs. And so this demo was designed to give you a in-depth perspective into um, various functionalities that Platform Line supports. And again, just how simple we make it to get up and running with your Platform Line OpenStack private cloud. For more information, send us an email to info at platformline.com or visit our website platformline.com to request a free trial or a demo. Thank you.